There are thousands of first-person games out there, all of which covering hundreds of genres and audiences. This can span anywhere from shooter games all the way down to puzzle games. In this video, you'll learn how to create a first-person movement controller to create a solid base for your very own game. This will include setting up player input actions and using these to control movement, jumping, and of course, your first-person camera. Now let's get started. Once you're in the editor, the first thing we're going to do is set up our scene. Go into your hierarchy, and we're going to create a cube for our ground. Make sure it's reset. We're going to be in our scene view. I'm going to make it 20 by 20 area. And then we're going to add our player. So 3D object, create a capsule, name it our player. And we're going to move it up so we can see it. And we're going to take our camera and we're going to make it a child of our player. Reset its position and move it up just about to where the head will be. Now that the scene's been set up, we're going to want to install the new input system. To do this, go to your package manager, go under Unity Registry, and scroll down until you find Input System, and click on Install, and restart the editor. Once your input system is installed, now we're going to want to start setting up our player. Under our player, we're going to minimize all of these. We're going to add a character controller, and we're going to add a new script. We're going to name this player controller, new script, create and add. And lastly, we're going to use Unity's player input. With this, we're going to create some input actions. So over here, create input actions. I'm going to name it player input. Double click it to open it up. I'm going to take this, dock it up here. We're going to create a new action map. I'm just going to name it player. And for our first action, we're going to want to set up our move input. Underneath the move, we're going to delete the no binding. It's going to be a value vector2. I'm going to do a 2D vector composite, WSD. Up, oh, it's going to be W on the keyboard. Down is S on the keyboard. Left is going to be A. And of course, right will be D. Then we're also going to set this up for another composite. We're going to name this joystick if you want to use this for mobile or controller. Our up is going to be our left stick, and it's going to be the up, left stick up, left stick, wow, I cannot find it, left stick up, there we go, left stick up on the gamepad, next thing we're going to do, left stick down, also on the gamepad. Left is going to be left stick left. If I can find it here, left stick left. And then lastly, left stick right on the gamepad. There we go. Now our move is set up. And while we're at it, we're also going to set up our move action or our look action so that way we can view in first person. This is also going to be a value. And it's going to be another vector too. And for our path, for our mouse, it's going to be the delta mouse. And then for our controller, we're going to add a 2D vector composite. Right stick. Our up is going to be now on the right stick. Once again, having trouble finding it. Right stick up on the gamepad. Right stick down for the gamepad. Right, left for left. And then right stick right on the gamepad. It always hides. It always hides. There we go. Right there. And now you have your player action set up. Make sure you save your asset. All right, now it's time to start moving the player. Go find your script that you just created for your player and open it up. All right, once you've opened up your script, the first thing we're going to do is add the Unity input namespace. Do this by doing using Unity engine dot input system. Now we're going to create all the variables that we're going to need for this project. First thing we're going to do is a character controller, controller, a vector two, for our move input, a public float, 
for a speed, a vector three for our player velocity, a private bool to check if we're grounded or otherwise on the ground, a public flow for our gravity. And we're going to set this equal to negative 9.8 F for float. Another public flow for our jump force. I'm going to set this equal to two. A camera. Another vector two for our look position. Another flow for our X rotation of the camera. It's going to equal zero F for now. A public float for our X sensitivity. And this is going to be equal 30F. And a public float for our Y sense. And again, I'm going to set this to 30. Now we're going to create two functions. One is going to be for our move function. I'm going to name it move player. We're going to add a jump function. And then lastly, a look function, which I'm going to name player look. Now we're going to fetch our input. To do this, we're going to come up to the top. We're going to do a public void on move. Not this. Man, I hate autofill. I'm going to turn that off. On move, input action, dot callback context, context. And in this, we're going to set our move input equal to context dot read value vector two and close it off. Now we're going to copy this. We're going to paste it two more times, once for the our jump function and once for our look function. We're going to do this on jump. This one's going to be on look. And instead of setting a value for here, we're just going to simply call our jump function. And for here, instead of move input, we're going to do our look position. In the start function, we're going to set our character controller. So controller equals get component character controller. And close that off. In our update function, we're going to want to be moving the entire time. So move player and player look. And we're going to make sure that our grounded variable is always being updated to make sure it equals our controller that is grounded. In our move player, our new vector three move direction is going to equal vector three dot zero. Our move direction dot x is equal to our move input dot x. And our move direction dot y is equal to our move input dot y. And that, pardon me, this is not y, this is z. We're going to now move our controller by controller dot move transform dot transform direction. We're going to pass in our move direction. Multiply it by our speed variable, and then multiply that by our time dot delta time. Right under this, we're going to control our gravity for our jump function. We're going to do player velocity dot y. So straight up and down is going to be equal to our gravity times time dot delta time. If our player is grounded and player velocity dot y is less than zero, our player velocity dot y equals negative two f. And then directly under this, we're going to move our controller again to take into account our new player velocity, 
which has our gravity attached to it. And lastly, we're going to set up our jump and look functions. And our jump function is very easy. If grounded, then our player can jump. So we're going to add new velocity. Player velocity dot y is going to be equal to math f dot square root of our jump force multiplied by negative 3f multiplied by our gravity. And there's our jump. For a player look, it's a little bit more complicated, but we'll get through this. Our x rotation is equal to our look position dot y multiplied by time dot delta time all multiplied by our y sensitivity. Right under this, we're going to use our x rotation. It's also going to be equal to math f dot clamp our x rotation between negative ADF and 80. What this is going to do is make sure that we can't look up past 80 or look down past negative 80. With this, we're going to take our camera dot transform dot local rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler with our x rotation and set everything else to zero. And very lastly, transform dot rotate vector three dot up multiplied by our look position dot x times time dot delta time all multiplied by our x sensitivity. And we have an error right here because instead of local position, we want this to actually be local rotation. I typed that wrong. All right, now we have our move, our jump, and our player look functions all completely ready and done. As a last thing, if you want to add it at the very start, if you want to make our mouse disappear while you're in the game, we're going to do our cursor dot lock state is equal to cursor lock mode dot locked. Now that this is all done, we're going to go into our Unity Editor and finish up our very last steps. Once you're back in the editor, we're going to open up our player object. For our speed, I'm going to set it to 8. And for our camera, drag in your main camera. To start calling our functions with our input, set our input action asset to our player input that we've created. And for behavior, instead of send messages, invoke Unity events. Open up the events under player. We're going to add a move event, any look event, and just not realizing our jump event isn't showing up because we did not create it in our input actions. So go back up to our input actions, create a new action. We're going to call it jump. It's going to be a button for our action type. And for our first binding, for keyboard and mouse, we're going to use a space for the keyboard. And for controller, for an Xbox controller, for instance, you're going to be using the A button, which is going to be our south button south on the gamepad. Save your asset. And now we can go back to our player under events. And now we should be able to add a jump callback. For each one of these, drag in our player. For our function, go to player controller. This one's gonna be on move for our move callback. For our look callback, go to player controller on look. And lastly, for a jump, player controller on jump. Now, once you click play, you should have a fully functional player controller. You can jump, look around, and move around. Now, your look may look really snappy like this, and this is a glitch within the Unity Editor. If you were to build this scene and play it in your actual browser, it'll work completely fine. It'll be smooth. For whatever reason, this is a glitch in Unity, and I don't know when they'll fix it. Congratulations, you now have a working base for your first person game. Feel free to mess around with some of the variables and tune the controller to your liking. With this controller, you can build on top of it and add your very own game mechanics to make it unique and interesting. I hope this video helped you and if there are any tutorials you'd like to see on the channel, leave a comment down below. And if you like the video, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.